You know, as I finished watching Don't Park on the Grass 2024, a tournament that has returned after almost six years since its last iteration, I came to the conclusion that Japan doesn't know the Palutena matchup. Japan doesn't know about former top tiers. They know about the Steves, the Min Mins, the low tier heroes back home, etc. Today we talk about the underdog who overperformed at Don't Park the Grass 2024. MFA. <laughs> you thought I was going to say Louis Money, huh? In all seriousness, despite the thumbnail headlining Louis Money, I want to give some flowers to MFA. What a run this player had. The reverse 3 0 on Big D was quite unexpected and impressive at the same time. The win on top Donkey Kong player Rari Kusu also was one probably most did not see coming. And finally, the cherry on top. Despite not winning, MFA took the player who is very likely going to be the second best player in the world in Mia to a game 5. The first game would go to MFA playing amazing in center stage, keeping Mia cornered very well. The second and third game would go to Mia making the right adjustments to take the lead in the set. In game 4, MFA went from MFA to MKA. MFA was down throughout the majority of game 4 and in some way, somehow, the Olimar player brought it back and sent us to a game 5. The Olimar player would pop off as well as if he had won the set, but this was truly incredible. A set where Mia was expected to win easily was turning out to be one of the hardest for him. His over 70% win ratio on Shuton made it justified to believe this since, no disrespect to MFA, I think if asked who is a better Olimar player, the vast majority of people would say Shuton. The fifth and final game would go to Mia getting another JV3 on one of the standout players of this event. Once again, congratulations to MFA for a fantastic run. But obviously, you saw the thumbnail, we will talk about Louis Money and his amazing performance at Don't Park on the Grass 2024. And to conclude, we will also talk about the top 8 of this event. So to start, Louis Money was the player that played the most sets than any other player at DPG 2024. Louis Money's first big set on stream would be to play top Diddy Kong player, Beastly. After an intense back and forth between these two players, Louis Money would get the win with a down air off a hard read on Beastly. Next up, Louis Money would play against Ken. Listen guys, I think Ken is a great person. I respect him massively for knowing how to speak English. But after Louis Money won game 1, let's just say that Ken introduced Louis Money to the vibes throughout the 2nd, 3rd, and 4th game. Let's just put it that way. After the set against Ken, Louis Money would have a few sets and losers afterwards before top 8 qualification. On the loser's side, first up, Louis Money would face Japanese Ike player Tora. Luis would take game 1 with one of those jump reads with an up air. With an offstage back air, Luis would take the second game and go up 2-0. 3 minutes and 3 seconds was how long it took for Tora to get a 2 stock and her first game win in the set. By punishing an air dodge by Louis Money, Tora would get the 4th game win bringing it to a game 5. And when it seemed like Tora had all the momentum to get a reverse 3-0, Luis would close out game 5 to stay alive. But Tora, an unranked player taking a player like Louis Money to a game 5 getting 17th at an event far from home with Ike of all characters, is commendable. After that close scare, Louis would face Canadian Joker player Lemon. With a back air and a 2 stock, Luis would win game 1 looking sharp and focused. Unfortunately for Lemon, he let go of his shield too early and the very active up till of Palutena caught his Joker while Lemon caught another game loss. And then Lemon would lose the set when Louis Money would connect the powerful down tilt. That move kills? After a dominating display by the American against the Canadian, Louis Money would take on the other star player of this event, MFA. With a 3 stock in game 1, Louis Money would take the first game of the set. With the Tri State Twister, Luis would take the second game. MFA looked to be running out of ideas and tired from the run he had that day. And finally, with a few pummels and a back throw, Louis Money would get back-to-back 3-0s to qualify for the top 8 through losers. In losers 8s, Louis Money would play against the current champion of Don't Park on the Grass, MBD. Granted, that crown he got was nearly 6 years ago. Smash Ultimate was vastly different back then. Game 1 would go to MBD up-tilting Louis Money on the platform after a bad auto-reticle. 
With the last active hitbox of up air, Luis would win the second game. With a supercharged up smash reading an air dodge of MVDs to ledge, Luis would take this game 3 in convincing fashion. Another anti-air with Snake's up tilt would seal the fourth game for MVD to take this to a game 5. And finally, with a back air off stage, Luis would get the win in this set and eliminate the current DPG champ, also letting out a massive sigh of relief. The next set of losers 8s would be two fellow Japanese players, Ken and Snow. With a commanding 3 stock, Ken would put himself on the board, winning game 1 emphatically. After not being able to connect his extension, Snow would seal out game 2 with less than a minute remaining on the clock. The third game would see Ken winning at a pace that is distinct to the vibes, a very fast pace. By reading a jump off the ledge, Ken would seal out this fourth game and the set at 3-1. Can I just say something real quick? Snow has got to have the most amazing hairstyle of any top player. No elaboration will be made. Anyways, now we move on to the winner's semis, where a banger set was on the horizon. Spargo and Shuton would be next up. 2 minutes and 7 seconds was all it took for Shuton to take this first game. Spargo would respond right away with a fast game win. Not as fast as Shuton's, Spargo's would come in at 3 minutes and 10 seconds. The theme of fast paced gameplay would continue in this third game. Spargito would win game 3 with a 7 second zero death on Shuton, who even he himself could not help but be impressed with such a crazy sequence. Even the Japanese players in the back were giving their seal of approval to the future best player in the world. Also, 69%! Despite at one point having a 2-1 stock lead, Spargito would row against the currents and get a 3-1 win on Shuton to get to winner's finals. Next winner's semi set would be another clash between two players from Japan. Mia, who needs no introduction, the other player being Raru, who has a strong chance of being ranked top 10 next season. Okay, for some reason the title says Snow, but this is Raru, so uh, Gallant, can you guys please fix that? Raru would win this game 1 with a reverse 3 stock to Mia, an impressive first game by the Luigi player. With a game and watch down air, Mia would tie the set up at 1-1. Raru would take the third game with an up smash plus a JV2 as well. When Raru looked to be mounting a comeback, Mio would get the game-winning back air taking us into a Game 5. The Game 5 would comfortably go to Mia, and that would see Mia join Spargo in Winner's Finals. First up in Loser's Quarters would be the unexpected presence in Top 8, Louis Money and Mr. Consistent Shuton. With a shield break that sent Palu straight to her demise, Shuton would be triumphant in this first game. Shuton would also win Game 2 with a hard read on Louis Money's jump plus a JV2 as well. Finally, in this third game, Luis was able to get an up air high in the sky to put the set at 2-1. With a fearless back air off stage, Louis would take us to a game 5 also popping off for being able to bring it back and to the 5th game. And finally, Louis would obtain the reverse 3-0 against Shuton with a fast fall nair into an up tilt. Next up would be a guaranteed Japanese player eliminated and one advancing. Raru and Ken were up next. The first game would go to Ken after Raru could not get anything started on that last stock of Ken's. In game 2, Ken would hand the game to Raru with a homing attack that missed with only 13 seconds left on the clock. Raru would shamelessly pop off, but to be fair to him, he did have the lead in percentages. In game 3, Ken would go back to using deep edge guards to put the score at 2-1. Raru would show some fight in game 4 and even out the set at 2-2, taking us into another game 5. Game 5 was Ken letting Raru know all too well about the vibes, aka timing him out. Now in the winners finals, we would get the clash between the two best players in the world, Spargo and Mia. After a little over 4 minutes, Spargito would take the first game with a dash attack and a very healthy last stock. The second game would see Spargo have a 3-1 stock lead at one point. But kudos to Mia who brought it back to the last stock. But again, the victory went to Spargo, who like in game 1, had a very healthy last stock. With a 2 stock also being at 69%, Spargo would close out this game 3, 3 0ing the player who was also in contention for that number 1 spot. Coming up next would be the sole American Louis Money versus Ken. With a minute and 7 seconds on the clock, Louis Money would win game 1 with a Palutena dash attack. The second game would take almost exactly the same amount of time that the first one did. But what was not the same was that now Ken would put the set at 1-1. With a nair that looked like it had the power of pre-nerfed Palu, 
Louis Money would win game 3 and put the set at 2-1. Ken would put the Sonic away and now try out another character, the Sephiroth. Ken would put a point on the board with Sephiroth to take us into the game 5 zone. The magic of the Seph would run out in this 5th game as Louis Money would move on to Losers Finals to keep this fairy tale run alive. Now in Losers Finals, the underdog would go up against one of the big dogs, Louis Money vs Mia. The first game went convincingly to Mia, who looked quite comfortable right now to go up 1-0. Mia would try to get away with an up special and then land with a downer, but Louis Money would see through the gimmicks and win this second game. Mia would let's trump Louis Money and take advantage of how active Game & Watch's back air is to seal out this third game. By waiting on the air dodge, Louis Money would get the victory in this fourth game and take us to the zone we knew of too well. Despite winning, Mia was so lucky to have won this game. Either player could have won, but unfortunately, Louis Money opted for an up smash and Mia was ready to punish it, and that would end the magical run of Louis Money at an astonishing third place. After a heartbreaking set for the American, Mia would meet Spargo in grand finals for a run back. Mia would display great two frame timings along with edge guarding to win this first game. Spargo would guess wrong on Mia's ledge option. The Japanese player would punish this and go up 2-0 looking for that reset. With a ferocious high backer, Spargo would show some fight in this set. With a dash in and out to bait a Mia option, Spargo would even out the set at 2-2. Being able to get a punish after pairing cross slash would give Mia the reset. The first game of the reset would go to Spargito with a dominating 2 stock. When it seemed like Mia would win, Spargo responded by getting off the ledge and doing the climb hazard. Mia would finally get a point in the reset who now was beginning to slowly figure out Spargo. And finally, Spargo would win saving his ultimate trump card for the very end. That trump card being a ledge trump into a back air since Mia was hogging the ledge a lot. And honestly, had this gone to a game 5, I think Mia would have won the whole thing. But with this win, it is absolutely inevitable now that Spargito will get that number one rank for the first time ever.